Today's Patriots training camp recap brought to you by Starland Sportsplex and Fun Park in Hanover. I'm Alex Barth, Mike Cadlick in for Scott Zolak today. Bit of a stripped down set with it being a week in practice, but we still have a ton to get to, starting with Mike Jacoby Brissett. Well, maybe his best practice of the summer. Yeah, for sure. I thought Jacoby was awesome today, and I think it's it's obvious that he's going to understand this system and this offense because he's worked with Alex Manpel before, and I think we've seen that throughout training camp, but I think he put that together with some really good throws today as well. You know, the, there was the one in the one-on-ones to Jalen Rager down the sideline. Uh, he hit K- K.J. Osborne for a touchdown on uh, Christian Gonzalez in 11-on-11, and so I think his command for the offense, putting the ball in the right place, uh, nothing was too sped up for him. I think he really put it all together today. I think I only counted, you know, one really – bad throw I think he uh he was undercut by Christian Gonzalez on the sideline during 11 on 11s but yeah and it goes it goes into the whole storyline of him being the guy to you know take and curate Drake May under his wing I think he really showed that again command for the offense understanding and he put it together with some great throws I think the best example of that his highlight throw today in the red zone he's rolling to his right and ends up hitting KJ Osborne back of the end zone tight window on, on the run and Osborne told us after practice they put that play in this morning and Osborne's his third read on that play. So, like I said, just the veteran stuff you expect to see from a guy like Jacoby Brissett. We've seen that. Now, Drake May, it was kind of more of the same. Yep. There were some highs. There were some lows. He did get a little less than two minutes. row, 121 on the clock. Got the team in a field goal range. But he was also erratic. Had a problem with passes being batted at the line of scrimmage today. Had three of those in 19 pass attempts and 11 on 11. So, the one thing I'll say about Drake May, though, more opportunities he threw 19 passes in 11 on 11s the most of any quarterback he was the only one that got any semblance of a late game opportunity the one and a half minute drill we'll call it Jacoby Brissett didn't have one of those today so he is repping more but there wasn't this big jump in progress today and I think the 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 good that you're going to get with Drake May sometimes comes out of the bad right because he is that athletic quarterback he wants to extend plays he can throw on the run he can fit it into tight windows and you saw the really good when he's rolling to his left and finds fellow rookie Jalen Polk on a crosser perfect window I think Isaiah Bolden was trailing in coverage but it was really where only Polk could get it but then you're right the batted plays he's trying to do a little bit too much he tries to sneak it into a, to a window to Jaheim Bell it gets tipped up and almost picked off by Del Pettis who by the way had a good day is in the right place at the right time on the defense later on tries to make the similar play and actually completes it to Jacob Warren so again it, it's ups and downs he's learning um, but I thought today overall was good for me I think he dipped a little bit during some 11 on 11 periods uh, but then like you mentioned finish it off with that with that two minute drill that with the uh, completed kick at the end as well I know people want an offensive line update uh, after the pre is an opener and the update is no update it's right. still Vidarian low left tackle really the only change came on the third unit with Liam Fornadel getting some center reps instead of Antonio Maffi or um, uh, Charles Turner right. but it does feel like Vidarian Lowe is kind of penciled in as that left tackle you know you, you thought maybe after Thursday night they'd try something else give Caden Wallace more reps for now it still looks like low it's fine. I mean, he's there. He's playing okay. Um, it's not the Vidarian Lowe we saw from last year, where it felt like turnstile city every single time. Every every press box tweet from us was, you know, ravaged with fans saying, why is this guy on the football field? And it hasn't been that throughout camp. I think people are kind of sick of hearing that name, but he's been okay at left tackle. And I think okay is the right word, where we saw um, rookie Caden Wallace there at one point throughout um, the early period, that sort of middle of camp, and he looks pretty good, and then they've changed it. And that's why you kind of get sick to your stomach when hearing it. But I think it's fine. It just, the prospect of it being their plan now into the future kind of kind of stinks because you want to see Caden Wallace there. You want to see that. But there's been this idea that maybe they're, you know, spreading the guys, the tackles across the first and second unit to make sure Drake May is more comfortable. Um, And we saw that a little bit on Thursday night. So, yeah, no real update. But I think... we can't be so disappointed in seeing Vidarian Lowe there right now because I think he's been okay and better than he was last year. On the defensive side of the ball, Matthew Judon, a full participant today after he was limited last week, did have a pass breakup early in camp, some pressures as well. I thought he looked good. That that whole thing remains weird. Like, he's still out here, he's still doing his thing, and no update on the contract or anything like that. Yeah, Mayo mentioned it being he was asked before practice, and he said, you know, everybody has a bad day. And I think that's kind of what they're amounting this to is a bad day for Matthew Judon. He came out and he, 
kind of threw his fit and did his whole thing. But he's been out here. You saw the clip on the um, on the Channel 4 WBZ broadcast where he's coaching those guys up. Mayo said he liked it. He enjoyed it. And we mentioned that play to KJ Osborne, the touchdown, too. The reason that Jacoby Brissett was on his third read was because Matthew Judon buried Javon Baker in coverage on the flat. So he looked good. He's, again, a participant. I think, you know, it might have been mentioned on the broadcast that he's dealing with something. I don't know if they meant injury or contract, what have you. But, again, situation is weird. He's out here. No real resolution looks to be in place right now, but it looks like he's going to play himself out on the contract for now. One other small note on the defense that just stood out to me, Sean Wade played a big role in that preseason opener. I know some people wondered about his role on this team. Will they need slot corner depth? We saw Isaiah Bolden rep more in the slot today, so maybe an opportunity to win some snaps there. I do want to talk about special teams. We don't do that a ton on the show, but really fun period to end practice. Four live field goals for each kicker, but it wasn't just live in the sense that it was 11 on 11. They turned the music up as loud as it's been all practice. They had the fans making noise, and the players who weren't the 22 on the field were kind of surrounding the kickers, yeah. like like made a, a, a U-shape in the backfield, not in the way where they were kicking, but you had DeMarcus Covington and Dietrich Wise like waving their hands in the kickers' faces and guys yelling and jumping around. Uh, in those situations, uh, Joey Sly hit three of four. He also had a 53-yarder earlier in practice. Chad Rowland hit two of four. Are things maybe trending towards Joey Sly here, Mike? I don't know. I mean, again, Mayo said it was wide open. I think it was Friday when we talked to him after the game that that competition's still wide open. Um, shaky for both of them today, I thought, in that period. And, again, you have them literally jumping in their faces, like screaming on their heads. They had the, the, um, the season ticket holders here, like screaming their heads off. So it was good to kind of get that extra live rep, if you will, where you simulate a – you could call it a game situation where the game's on the line, right? The place is, you know, going bonkers. Um, I, I don't want to call it that he's necessarily – uh, thinning the gap yet. I still think Ryland probably has a pretty solid hand on it just based on, you know, former first round pick, um, kind of your future at kicker versus just bringing in Joey Sly and then having to reset the position. I know it may not necessarily matter because, again, Ryland, Belichick pick, all, all that stuff, but I, I still think he probably has right now the stranglehold on the position. All right, that's today's Patriots training camp recap brought to you by Starland Sportsplex and Fun Park in Hanover. We'll be back tomorrow with Scott Zolak and the backdrop and the real mics and everything. Until then, you can find more training camp coverage on 98.5thesportshub.com. For Mike Cadlick, I'm Alex Barth. Thanks for watching.